Hi everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Jetson AGX Xavier and the New Era of Autonomous Machines, hosted by Dustin Franklin. Before we begin, we wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your screen are multiple application widgets. All of the widgets, as well as the slide area, are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most out of your desktop space. If you have any questions during the webinar, please submit them through the Q&A widget. We'll try to cover as many questions as possible during the Q&A portion, but if there's any we don't get to, please post them on the forum to keep the conversation going. Be sure to check out our resource list for links to the developer site, forums, wiki, and more. And if you run into any technical issues during the webinar, you can find answers to some common questions located in the help widget at the bottom of your screen. An on-demand version of the webinar, as well as the slide deck, will be available approximately one day after the webinar and can be accessed using the same audience link that was sent to you earlier. And with that, let's get started. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. We're excited to be with you for this deep dive into NVIDIA's latest high-performance embedded computer for AI, Jetson AGX Xavier. It's been an exciting time here at NVIDIA with Xavier hitting the streets recently. Some of you may have already received your dev kits or tuned into our previous webinars, in which case welcome back, and some of you may be here for the first time to find out more about Jetson. We're going to cover the ins and outs of the latest platform and how you can use it to create and deploy your own AI-powered applications into the field. Recently, there's been a huge uptick in the number of autonomous machines being developed and deployed. There's lots of different applications solving real problems in different industries, for example, manufacturing robots able to assemble and package complex products, to automated harvesting and weeding in precision agriculture, smart cities and intelligent video analytics, inventory and logistics for retail stores and warehouses, last mile package delivery, industrial inspection, and personal service robots in the home and medical facilities. They all share two things in common. They've determined that they need AI to solve their problem, and they can't rely on a connection back to the data center. They need to have AI at the edge. Why is AI at the edge important? Four reasons. Bandwidth, latency, privacy, and availability. First, bandwidth. Platforms today typically use multiple high-definition sensors for perception, and the pipe back to the data center over a cellular connection is relatively small. Second, latency. Mobile platforms that are moving need real-time vision and perception to avoid running into anything and provide safe navigation and path planning. Third, privacy. Many of these platforms are operating out in the world and as such, the data collected may be of a sensitive nature or contain personal information, and if possible, we would like to avoid the transmission of that over the air. And finally, availability. Even with the prevalence of 4G, LTE, and urban areas, there remain dead zones or degraded service, particularly in more rugged terrain, or even around or inside some large buildings, and that means a cellular connection shouldn't be relied on for mission-critical applications. Companies turn to Jetson and GPUs because it's the only platform that gives them the level of performance and ease of development that enables them to create and deploy cutting-edge AI technology and get it to market quickly. There's no other practical way. Now it turns out that many of these platforms are using GPUs but not all of them are using Jetson today. Jetson TX2 is a fantastic product, but it only scratches the surface of what's needed. So these platforms are either using Jetson to solve part of a bigger problem, or they're prototyping using big GPUs because they need a lot more performance than what Jetson TX2 can deliver today. But what if you had a big GPU performance at one-tenth of the power, or 20x the performance of a Jetson TX2 that you have today? This is why we've created Xavier. Delivery robots are a prime example of autonomous machines that are beginning to take off and have huge compute requirements since they need significant AI on board to safely drive outdoors in dynamic and unstructured environments and the ability to interact with humans. All of this takes an extraordinary amount of processing capability on the robot due to bandwidth and latency constraints. Platforms like this are typically outfitted with several HD sensors that provide them with 360 degree coverage for situational awareness of the environment, all of which need to be processed in real time with up-to-date vision and perception. 
Navigations broke down into several stages in the pipeline that are often implemented using AI and deep learning. Many robots use a forward-facing stereo camera or depth sensor that requires the depth information to be mapped and extracted in order to provide accurate measurements in a 3D point cloud. This alone can consume more resources than a typical PC can provide. NVIDIA has released a new open source deep neural net called Stereo DNN, which performs enhanced stereo disparity mapping using deep learning. From there, the robot needs to perform obstacle detection and tracking so that it can avoid moving pedestrians, vehicles, and identify objects of interest and landmarks. Detection is typically performed on multiple cameras simultaneously so the robot doesn't miss anything in a blind spot. Often this vision processing is done with detection networks like YOLO, SSD, or faster RCNN, followed by recognition networks like ResNet or GoogleNet for more accurate classification. Similar detection and recognition networks are used to provide human-machine interaction for facial recognition and pose estimation so that the robot can understand gestures from humans along with speech recognition so that it can receive commands verbally during delivery. In parallel, the robot needs to update and refine its position in the world, a process called localization that registers and aligns the current sensor data against the sensor data that's already been collected, along with cross-referencing against inertial guidance sensors and GPS, which may be noisy and require additional filtering, or in the case of GPS, not very accurate and sometimes unavailable in occluded environments. The robot's localized position also feeds into map building, a compute-heavy process referred to as SLAM or simultaneous localization and mapping. SLAM, along with the obstacle tracking, feeds into the path planner, which we can use for semantic segmentation networks like SegNet or fully convolutional networks like FCN AlexNet or FCN8S to label every pixel or voxel from the forward-facing sensor, which allows it to understand which areas are roadway, which are sidewalk, trees, sky, and other general features of the environment, which may not be explicitly detected as obstacles during the earlier stages. Segmentation outputs a free space map that lets the robot know where it's safe and unoccluded to drive, which informs the path planner of which routes to take and translate to motor commands by the controller. Based on our own internal research platforms and with publicly available information about different implementations, we believe this perception stack is approximately a 20 to 30 trillion operations per second problem depending on the sensor package. For comparison's sake, Jetson TX2 delivers 1.3 teraops, which means you may not be able to fully run the pipeline in real time and get partial autonomy. In fact, the only practical way before Xavier to get 20 or 30 teraops for the full perception stack and complete autonomy was with an x86 and big discrete GPU like a GTX 1070. And in fact, that's what some startups have been doing. They prototype delivery robots with an x86 and a GTX 1070, a 150 watt plus machine. Imagine building a full PC into a little battery powered robot whose range is effectively governed by their power consumption and battery life, so every watt and pound of extra weight counts. As we'll see, Xavier is the answer to running it all efficiently and providing the complete deployable autonomous solution. Let's look at another example, video analytics like for a smart traffic application. For such an application, you want many cameras coming into a single controller, and you want to run analytics across all of those video streams, and you want to track information across them. We actually have a smart garage at our headquarters with 30 HD cameras coming into a single server. In applications like this for video analytics and for autonomous machines, often both detection and recognition networks are used where the primary detection networks localize the objects you're looking for, and then an image recognition network will take the regions of interest or ROIs from the detectors and classify them in greater detail. Like for example, license plate recognition or facial recognition, where first any faces in the image are detected, and then the individual faces are ID'd against the database with recognition. Similar thing with license plate, first the cars are detected and license plates are found, and then the individual characters are recognized. You can benefit from using batching for multi-phase tasks like this, where all the detected ROIs are classified in parallel for increased performance. An example of this for autonomous machines would be a precision ag harvesting robot, where first it needs to locate the fruit or crops, and then it needs to classify the ripeness and whether to pick it or not. Or a manufacturing or warehouse robot that needs to find and bin particular parts. 
The increased performance of batching is also good to take advantage of when you are processing multiple sensor streams simultaneously, like with 360 degree situational awareness or those 30 cameras in the garage. With the smart garage scenario and all of, together with 30 HD full motion streams, the inference processing with the detection and recognition neural nets and temporal tracking, this is a 30 plus tera ops video analytics problem. Before Xavier, you needed a server to do that, and in fact, we initially architected the solution with an x86 and Tesla P4 GPU. But such a solution is impractical for a number of smart city deployments, where the processing is needed at the edge in a light pole or conduit somewhere, or is running off solar power. Here's a look at some common deep learning networks used predominantly for vision tasks and the computational resources that they require. Many of them are based around the image recognition networks on the left, which classify smaller slices of images or detected ROIs, and also often get reused as the encoder backbones in larger primary networks like those for object detection and segmentation. The compute requirements greatly increase with the network complexity and pixel density. The common image recognition networks that we frequently see being deployed in practice today are ResNet and VGG due to their improved accuracy versus earlier networks. For object detection and localization, we see a lot of the YOLO and SSD variants with factor RCNN providing superior accuracy at the cost of additional compute resources. And with the recent growth in the capabilities of embedded edge platforms, we see semantic segmentation networks being deployed more frequently, which provide a lot of valuable perception about the environment for navigation and path planning. When we start talking about applying these detection and segmentation networks to full motion video, as you can see, the compute requirements quickly become very high. Many of these high-end networks would need several Jetson TX2s or a large GPU just to run at passable frame rates. To address these challenges and the massive amount of compute needed at the edge to provide full autonomy, we created Xavier, the world's first AI processor designed specifically for autonomous machines. And around Xavier, we created NVIDIA AGX systems, our family of systems for edited, embedded AI high-performance computing. It includes NVIDIA Drive for self-driving cars, Jetson for robotics, and Clara for medical imaging and diagnostics. They start at 10 watts and 32 teraops with Jetson and scale up to 320 teraops for Drive Pegasus, all based around the common Xavier architecture. Jetson AGX Xavier is our new compact embedded system on module for AI-powered autonomous machines. It's capable of more than 32 teraops of mixed precision compute with user configurable power modes ranging from 10 to 15 to 30 watts. It contains the performance of a whole server or GPU workstation and represents a huge leap forward in capability for edge devices. It's remarkable because it's essentially integrates six different computers in one, the Volta GPU, ARM CPU, deep learning acceleration engines, vision accelerators, a video processing engine, and an image signal processor. It's the first AI architecture developed from the ground up for robotics and autonomous machines. On the software side, it runs Linux and NVIDIA's Jetpack SDK, including CUDA 10, QDNN, TensorRT, and a suite of development tools. With over 650 gigabits per second of bandwidth on and off the device for streaming lots of different sensors at once and keeping the chip fed with data, Jetson AGX Xavier features unsurpassed I.O. for low-powered embedded system on modules. It's one of the first devices with PCIe Gen 4 on the market, and it can even do both host root mode and endpoint device modes. This allows you to connect multiple Xaviers together with remote DMA or into other CPU topologies. And in the future, we'll be adding software support for attaching NVIDIA discrete GPUs to Xavier over PCIe. There are 16 PCIe Gen 4 lanes each with the 4 gigabytes per second of bi-directional bandwidth and five 16 giga transfer controllers, three of which can be switched between root port and device endpoint mode. The five controllers are in 1x8, 1x4, 1x2, and 2x1 lane configurations, and they can all be used simultaneously. For streaming high-definition, low-latency sensors, there's up to 109 gigabits per second of dedicated camera ingest via 16 lanes of MIPI CSI2, and there's also eight lanes of the new SLVS EC standard. You can activate six sensor streams simultaneously in up to 36 virtual channels, allowing you to connect many more sensors if you use a stream aggregator. Since the high frequency parallel CSI signals require a trace length less than 30 centimeters, 
GMSL2 and FPD link transceivers can be used for long run connections over coax that can be daisy chained together with aggregation, which has the added benefit of simplifying the wiring of the sensors on board the platform. We've also added more USB 3 ports with their own dedicated SERTES lanes that no longer are pin mucks with the PCIe, so you can use all the USB ports and PCIe lanes simultaneously. There's three active 4K P60 displays, either HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort, or Embedded DisplayPort, and it also includes the traditional IOs like Gigabit Ethernet, I2C, SPI, CAN bus, UART, and GPIOs. Here's a summary of the specs of Jetson AGX Xavier as compared to Jetson TX2. Xavier moves to the Volta architecture, it adds new engines for AI and computer vision, new CPU architecture, and moves to 8 cores. We doubled the memory size and more than doubled the memory bandwidth with 256-bit bus, quadrupled the encode and decode, and added 4 more CSI camera lanes and upgraded them to C5 1.1 at 6.8125 gigabytes per second per lane. The compute module measures 100 by 87 millimeters with a 16 millimeter Z height. But the specs only tell part of the story, really. It's really important to understand that Jetson AGX Xavier is not just a new version of Jetson TX2. There's a reason why we didn't call it Jetson TX3, because Jetson AGX Xavier is a fundamentally different product. Under Moore's law, performance doubles every 18 months but Jetson AGX Xavier is 20x the performance in 18 months. It's a whole new class of processor for autonomous machines, and it's the kind of leap you get to experience maybe once in a career. What's more is that with Jetson AGX Xavier, we're delivering more performance and 10 times the power efficiency compared to a GPU workstation. And obviously the Jetson is much smaller and more deployable. These benchmarks are showing ResNet 50 image recognition performance. We'll dig into more deep learning benchmark results a bit later. Here's a closer look at the Jetson AGX Xavier Compute Module, including the 699-pin board-to-board connector, which provides the high-speed I.O. to the breakout carrier board. The module has the Xavier SoC, memory, EMMC storage, PMIC, and power circuitry. The production OEM module for system and platform integrators to deploy products will be available in volume coming soon. The OEM module will include the heat sink, known as the thermal transfer plate, or TTP, with integrated heat pipes for efficient conduction cooling and end-user systems. The Jetson AGX Xavier Developer Kit is available now and includes everything to get started developing applications on Xavier today. It comes pre-assembled with the compute module, open source reference carrier board, heat sink, and power supply. The design files in CAD are downloadable from our website so developers can get started creating their own designs. You can also download Jetpack SDK and the L4T BSP from the dev kit from our website. The first pre-production release for Jetson AGX Saver was Jetpack 4.0 developer preview early access. We have an updated early access release of Jetpack posting soon, Jetpack 4.1, and we'll continually update Jetpack with enhancements and optimizations for Xavier. The retail price of the dev kit is $24.99 with discounts available in volume. And anyone who registers at developer.nvidia.com can get their first unit for $12.99. You also need to register to download the design docs and software, so it's best to take advantage of the developer discount up front. Here we see the dev kit's full length PCIe slot with eight of the lanes wired to Xavier's PCIe X8 Gen 4 controller and the other eight lanes to be broken out as SLVSEC. Also shown is one of the USB-C 3.1s, the micro USB 2.0 port, and the 40-pin GPIO header. It's worth noting that the micro USB port is for debug and not for flashing anymore. Flashing is now done through one of the USB-Cs. Here on the other side of the dev kit, you can see the power jack, the other USB-C 3.1, the RJ45 gigabit ethernet port, HDMI, and a hybrid eSATA and USB 3.0 connector. The hybrid port can be used as either eSATA or USB 3.0, so there are actually up to three USB 3.0s on the dev kit at your disposal. That connector is also enabled with eSATA P that can be used to deliver power to a 2.5 inch SSD. 
You can also deliver power to the dev kit either via the 9 to 20 volt DC barrel jack or via one of the USB-Cs. You can also connect DisplayPort to the USB-Cs via a dongle. On the underside of the dev kit carrier, you can find the M.2 key M and key E sites. The key M site accepts an NVMe storage module, and the key E site accepts a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LTE, or 5G M.2 module. Also located on the underside are the 16-lane camera header and micro SD card slot. On the left of the carrier, you can also see the high-density 699-pin board-to-board connector that mates with the compute module and receives all the signals before routing them to the various ports on the carrier. If desired, you can take our reference carrier board design and customize it to fit your own needs. With our design materials and docs openly available online, a diverse ecosystem has grown around Jetson, featuring third-party components and accessories geared towards developers, including miniature carriers, compact enclosures, sensors and cameras, quick start robotics platforms, and software tools, all compatible with Jetson. Everything you need is here to go from prototyping to production. Folks have quickly built up robots and drones and other embedded platforms using these off-the-shelf components. There's also partners available that specialize in AI and multimedia and producing custom designs. NVIDIA keeps a full listing of the Jetson ecosystem online through our developer website. Many of these ecosystem partners are currently developing products and solutions for Jetson AGX Xavier and are happy to help with your projects, so be sure to keep an eye out for new products launching soon. Next, we're going to dive into Xavier's architecture and take a look at the individual processing components, including the Volta GPU, Deep Learning Accelerator, Carmel CPU, and Vision Accelerator. At the heart of Xavier is its 512-core NVIDIA integrated Volta GPU, complete with 64 tensor cores. It's capable of up to 22 teraops of N8 or 11 teraflops of FP16, with a maximum clock frequency of 1377 MHz. Each Volta SM is partitioned into four independent scheduler blocks called SMPs, each with their own instruction cache, warp scheduler, dispatch unit, register file, 16 CUDA cores, and two tensor cores. Hence, with four SMPs for, per Volta SM, each SM contains a total of 64 CUDA cores and eight tensor cores. With, with twice the number of SMPs per SM in Volta than in Pascal, Volta has improved concurrency and supports more threads, warps, and thread blocks in flight. There are eight SMs per Xavier GPU, bringing the GPU total to 512 CUDA cores and 64 tensor cores. The L1 caches are four times larger and the L2 caches are eight times faster than previous generations. It supports CUDA 10 and compute capability 7.2. Tensor cores implement new floating point HMMA, half precision matrix multiply and accumulate, and IMMA, integer matrix multiply and accumulate instructions for accelerating dense linear algebra computations, signal processing, and deep learning inference. Each tensor core performs a 4x4 matrix multiply accumulation operation and 64 floating point or 128 integer operations per clock cycle per tensor core are performed. Results from individual tensor cores can be composed to construct larger multidimensional matrix multiplies, convolutions, and other similar operations, which is how they end up accelerating DNN inferencing at larger scales. Tensor core support has been pre-integrated into Kublas, QDNN and TensorRT so they can automatically take advantage of the additional acceleration. Tensor cores also are exposed to the programmers at the warp level through extensions to CUDA. These warp level tensor cores instructions span across all 32 threads per warp and use 16 by 16, 32 by 8, and 8 by 32 size matrices. New to Jetson are the deep learning accelerators. They offload the inferencing of deep neural networks and are optimized for energy efficiency. There are two independent DLAs per Xavier, each with a peak performance of 5 teraops N8 or 2.5 teraflops FP16 and between half a watt to a watt and a half of power consumption per DLA. DLA is an open source hardware architecture created by NVIDIA that's available at nvdla.org 
and has been adopted by chip industry leaders such as ARM, Marvel, and Sci-Fi, in addition to AI startups. On Xavier, the program with TensorRT5 and support layers including convolution, deconvolution, min, max, and mean pooling, activation layers like ReLU, sigmoid, and hyperbolic tangent, element-wise and scaling layers, local response normalization, channel access concatenation, and fully connected layers. If a particular layer configuration isn't supported, GPU fallback can be enabled in TensorRT such that it will run what layers it can on DLA and the others will be run on the GPU. There's fine-grained control available for selecting which layers run on DLA and which run on GPU, and TensorRT will automatically run the entire network coherently between the devices for the user. We'll cover the new TensorRT APIs for DLA a little bit later. Today, DLA support in TensorRT is for FP16 mode in the early access software, with support for N8 coming in a future release of Jetpack. Let's take a look at some Xavier inferencing benchmarks that we ran on the GPU and two DLAs. The GPU is running N8 mode and the DLAs are running in FP16 using Jetpack 4.1 early access software. Included in the charts are AlexNet, GoogleNet, ResNet 50, and VGG19 networks in batch sizes 1, 2, 4, 8, and 32, and in our upcoming technical blog we'll be publishing the full data tables up to batch size 128. The batch sizes of 2 and higher are relevant to autonomous machines and video analytics, where you may be processing multiple sensor streams simultaneously or performing multi-phase tasks like the approaches to primary detection and secondary recognition that we talked about earlier. These image recognition networks are also commonly reused as the encoder backbones of the various object detection and segmentation networks, so their performance is relevant to those as well. Compared to TX2, Jetson AGX Xavier currently achieves up to 18x the throughput of Jetson TX2 on VGG19, 12x on ResNet 50, and 9x on GoogleNet, measured running the initial early access software. Jetson AGX Xavier is projected to be up to 24x faster than Jetson TX2 with the additional software optimizations, like DLA support for N8. The performance delta compared to the previous generation increases significantly with batch sizes above 2 which can be useful when processing multiple sensor streams as mentioned and for performing phased classification and detection. Throughput of small batch sizes is exceptionally high as well, clocking in at 875 frames per second of GoogleNet for batch size 1, with latencies as low as 1.1 milliseconds. On the efficiency side, Jetson AGX Xavier is currently up to 8x more efficient than Jetson TX2, using images processed per second per watt as the basis for energy efficiency. The average delta between Jetson TX2 and Jetson AGX Xavier across all the network configurations and batch sizes results in a 5x increase in energy efficiency, with up to a 10x increase in efficiency when considering future optimizations. Both Jetsons were run in 15 watt power mode in these benchmarks. Jetson AGX Xavier and Jetpack ship with configurable preset power profiles for 10 watts, 15 watts, and 30 watts switchable at runtime using the NVP model power management tool. Users can also define their own customized profiles with different clocks and DVFS, or dynamic voltage and frequency scaling, governor settings that have been tailored to achieve the best performance for individual applications. NVP model is a software tool used to change the power modes and tweak profiles depending on your use case and your application's TDP. Jetpack ships with seven different presets that you can switch between, ranging from 10 to 30 watts. The default mode out of the box is 15 watts. You run nvpmodel-q command to query the current mode and nvpmodel-m to change modes. When you change modes, the new mode will persist after reboot, so you don't have to worry about making a startup script that sets your desired mode. You can also run the Tegrastats utility to keep an eye on the active clocks and processor utilization of the different cores. Here's a table showing the max clock frequencies and the core counts for the seven different power presets that Jetpack ships with. Some of the profiles have minimum frequencies specified as well, which enables the DVFS governor to scale in between depending on the workload. As mentioned, you can tweak and tailor their own profiles or add new profiles by editing the configuration file 
in Etsy slash nvpmodel.com. You can set clocks for the CPUs, GPUs, DLAs, vision accelerators, and memory controller and enable or disable CPU clusters and DLA or vision accelerator cores. Continue on to Xavier's Carmel CPU. It's an energy efficient 8 core 64 bit CPU based on ARM 8.2. It's a full implementation of the ARM 8.2 ISA, including advanced SIMD, vector floating point, ARM 8.2 FP16, and the RAS reliability, availability, and serviceability extension. The architecture is a 10 way superscalar featuring NVIDIA dynamic code optimization and dynamic branch prediction. Its eight CPU cores are partitioned into four heterogeneous clusters with two cores per cluster. Each core includes 128 kilobyte instruction and 64 kilobyte data L1 caches, plus a two megabyte ECC protected L2 cache shared between the two cores. And there's a four megabyte L3 cache that all the clusters share with ECC protection. Each core has an extraordinary energy efficiency of half a watt to one and a half watts per core depending on workload and with a maximum clock frequency of 2.26 gigahertz. And using the NVP model tool that we just talked about, individual clusters can be enabled and disabled for additional power savings. Let's take a look at CPU benchmarks that we ran between Xavier and TX2. The spec rate benchmark measures CPU throughput for multi-core systems. The overall performance score averages several intensive subtests, including compression, vector and graph operations, code compilation, and executing AI for games like chess and Go. The results show a greater than 2.5x increase in CPU performance between generations. Xavier also features two new vision accelerator engines for energy efficient offloading of computer vision algorithms like feature detection and matching, optical flow, stereo disparity block matching, and point cloud processing, in addition to traditional imaging filters like convolution kernels, histogramming, and morphological operators. Each vision accelerator consists of two seven-way very long instruction word vector processing units, an ARM Cortex-R5 core for command and control, and two DMA engines. Each seven-slot vector processing unit is capable of executing two vector, two scalar, and three memory operations simultaneously. Support for the Vision Accelerator engines will be enabled in a future release of Jetpack so that users are able to take advantage of them in their vision pipelines. Next, we're going to talk about software and the various NVIDIA SDKs for Jetson. NVIDIA has three predominant SDKs meant for creating and deploying AI applications on Jetson. There's the Jetpack SDK for AI at the Edge, there's DeepStream for video analytics, and Isaac for robotics and autonomous machines. Jetpack SDK provides everything you need to begin developing for Jetson and tools for customization and flashing of the dev kit and production devices. It includes software for both the host development PC and the target Jetson device. On the host side, it includes the Linux for Tegra BSP, core graphics libraries and drivers, multimedia and camera APIs, the CUDA toolkit, QDNN, TensorRT, VisionWorks, OpenCV, and NVIDIA performance primitives. On the host PC side, it also includes NVIDIA Insight developer tools for profiling and debugging the device. Jetpack 4.1 is the latest version of Jetpack for Jetson AGX Xavier. It's currently in developer preview early access release status, meaning that we're still making feature enhancements and optimizations, but you can get started today with prototyping your application before the production release. It supports CUDA 10, QDNN 7.3, and TensorRT 5. We've also posted pre-built PIP wheel installers for TensorFlow and build instructions for PyTorch, CAFE, and ROS. On the Linux side, Jetpack 4 includes kernel 4.9 and L4T R31. Ubuntu 18.04 is the OS that gets installed to Xavier, while Ubuntu 16.04 and 18.04 are supported on the host PC side in this release. To provide the best performance for deploying production networks into the field, NVIDIA TensorRT optimizes deep learning inferencing across NVIDIA's range of GPU products, what we call edge to cloud. 
it accelerates models provided in standard formats like CAFE, TensorFlow, and Onyx. Via this, it's able to import models from virtually every deep learning framework. It supports common network layers and allows unsupported layers to be delegated to user plugins or custom layers. TensorRT makes it easy to take an existing model and leverage mixed precision in Xavier like N8 and FP16 for increased performance and is also transparently leveraged DLA hardware. The way that TensorRT accelerates DNN inferencing is by performing a host of optimizations to create an efficient execution engine that's used at runtime. TensorRT will fuse multiple network layers and combine their execution into one kernel, saving lots of memory bandwidth by eliminating intermediate global memory access. It also performs kernel auto-tuning to tailor itself to the specific GPU or DLA devices detected, in addition to taking advantage of specific hardware optimization like tensor cores and mixed precision support. All these factors make TensorRT faster at inferencing on Jetson than other solutions. TensorRT 5 introduces support for Xavier, including the Volta GPU and IMMA HMMA tensor cores for N8 and FP16. It also enables early access support for DLA with FP16 support. N8 support for DLA will be added to an upcoming release of TensorRT and Jetpack. There have been new APIs added to TensorRT 5 for using DLA, namely to its iBuilder interface for controlling which layers run on the GPU and which run on DLA. There are multiple overloads of a set device type where you can set the default device for all the layers or just an individual layer with fine-grained control. If you enable GPU fallback, TensorRT will try to run the layers that it can on DLA and fall back to GPU for those that are unsupported. Networks that use a mix of DLA and GPU are automatically executed between both without needing the user to manually change devices or split up the network. Refer to Chapter 6 of the TensorRT 5 Developer Guide and the updated samples for more info about using the DLAs. So we mentioned Edge to Cloud. This is our approach for common shared infrastructure that you can train in the cloud or data center and deploy to the field. Having support for the same libraries and SDKs across NVIDIA's products greatly reduces the amount of development or porting required to deploy solutions across a variety of devices. On one hand, we have Jetson and Tesla P4 and T4 for inferencing at the edge and on-premises services, and the DGX supercomputers for data center and cloud. All share CUDA and the deep learning frameworks for ease of migration of end-user applications. A common scenario that leverages Edge to Cloud is video analytics. Deep Streams are application SDK for intelligent video analytics. It utilizes the different processors on Jetson AGX Xavier to decode the video streams, to scale, de-warp, and crop every stream, to batch the frames up for processing, to run network inferencing with TensorRT, to track the data across the screens, and to display the information on the screen and encode the data for storage, all using zero copy for reducing extra memory copies and reducing overhead. DeepStream's designed for processing many center streams in parallel, more than you would think would be possible on a single low-power embedded device. Here's a video of Jetson AGX Xavier running DeepStream on 30 HD streams in parallel. Each stream is 1080p 30 and is running vehicle and pedestrian detection deep learning models on every frame of every stream simultaneously. That's over 1850 megapixels per second, all on a single Xavier. We're going to make this DeepStream demo app available for download along with the video clips so it can be installed on the dev kit out of the box. For TX2, we showed a similar demo that was only able to process two HD streams simultaneously, which at the time, not that long ago, was SDK is a collection of libraries, drivers, APIs and other tools that will make it easy to add AI into next generation robots for perception, navigation, and manipulation. Isaac has high fidelity simulation for training AI in virtual environments, 
and the runtime component targets Jetson for deployment and includes various algorithms and building blocks that we call GEMS for implementing autonomous capabilities. We're shooting for a public release of Isaac around the end of this year, so sign up on our website to be notified when we have more news. Here's a look at what Isaac's simulator looks like next to reality. It can generate various types of synthetic sensor data, including multi-view depth cameras and LIDARs. This was taken from our Carter delivery robot demo at headquarters. We're also adding an RTX ray tracing support to the Sims rendering engine for the turn cards. The Sims physics engine also supports GPU acceleration via Flex and PhysX. Shipping along with Isaac will be a number of camera-ready GPU accelerated building blocks for vision and perception to deploy autonomous systems, including stereo depth, object and pedestrian detection, pose and gesture recognition, localization and mapping, visual odometry, and path planning. All of these gems run incredibly efficiently on the Xavier architecture with very little overhead, and they can be used to create an autonomous machine quickly without needing to spend a lot of your own development time on the low-level vision algorithms. So next we're going to talk about the resources and support available to all developers that we have online. Early on in Jetson, since DK1, we made the decision to make everything publicly available, which was somewhat a departure for high-end SOCs at the time. Everything someone needs, whether it's a large OEM, a startup, or someone in their garage, can go from an idea to a final product based on the content that's available on the Jetson developer sites. This includes SDK downloads, hardware design collateral, technical design guides, developer tools, training and tutorials, and the developer forum for asking and getting answers to support questions. It also includes our ecosystem partners that are there to help you with your design needs. We posted the initial doc set here for Jetson Xavier, including the module data sheet, product design guide, reference carrier design guide files, dev kit and carrier CAD, L4T software docs, and user guides. And we're preparing a lot more for release. We keep a running list on the forums that you can keep track of. For support, we have an incredibly active community on the developer forums and eLinux wiki. Some of the top embedded developers in the world post here and are happy to help out. And we have several NVIDIA employees posting there every day, including myself, so we hope to see you there. One open source tutorial that we developed for the community is what we call Two Days to a Demo, which some of you may already be familiar with from our previous webinars. It's an end-to-end -end guide to getting started with training and deploying your own deep learning models using our Interactive Digits training framework and TensorRT for accelerated inferencing onboard Jetson. It contains step-by-step -step guides for image recognition, object detection, and segmentation vision primitives, which can in turn be retrained on your own subject matter and integrated into AI-powered applications. It's called Two Days to a Demo because you can follow it in roughly two days to make your own deep learning app. And we've updated the code to support Xavier so you can run it on the new dev kit. We also have a version of Two Days to a Demo geared specifically for reinforcement learning. It starts off playing the OpenAI gym to make sure that the reinforcement algorithms are learning properly. Critically, it provides a C++ API to the reinforcement algorithms, which are commonly implemented in Python using PyTorch or TensorFlow. With the C API, it's much easier to integrate into existing robots and devices which are predominantly based in C, ROS, or Isaac. This two days to a demo also provides virtual scenarios for the robot to learn in simulator and gradually increases the complexity of these tasks to improve the success of training the network. TensorFlow is arguably the most popular deep learning framework out there today. We posted to our developer site and forms official pip wheel installers for TensorFlow on Xavier and TX2 with GPU support enabled. This avoids several hours of compilation and makes it quick and easy to run your TensorFlow Python code out of the box on Jetson. We also have step-by-step -step tutorials for further accelerating TensorFlow with TensorRT. You can do it either by exporting your TensorFlow graph and importing it into TensorRT, or you can use a new extension added to TensorFlow called TFTRT, which allows for seamless integration of TensorFlow and TensorRT without the need to export your model or change code bases. For those of you interested in getting up and running in robotics, 
we have Chetson Quick Start platforms available from the community that pre-integrate Chetson into hardware for easy use. Toyota has their HSR, or Human Support Robot, from the RoboCup at Home competition aimed at personal assistance to the disabled and elderly. ClearPath is offering Jetson as a build option on their outdoor rovers. Jetson Hacks has the MIT-inspired Racecar J 110th scale platform as a proxy for self-driving car development. If you don't already know Jetson Hacks, he runs a great website with lots of tutorials and tips and tricks for Jetson. The Ion Robotics R1 UGV comes with support for Ross and ArduPilot. And NVIDIA also has our Redtail Autonomous Drone Platform using deep learning for navigation with all the build instructions and code open source on GitHub. Well, that brings us to the end of today's presentation. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you will join us in this great leap forward with Xavier. These slides will be posted to GitHub and the Jitson forum, so keep an eye out for them there. We have a technical blog coming out soon, which contains the full performance data that we mentioned earlier, so stay tuned. Next, we're going to get set up for Q&A, so if you have any questions, enter them into the webinar chat now. And if we don't get to your question, please feel free to post it at the forums, and we'll get back to you soon. Okay, first question we have here. Um, can you share your roadmap on DeepStream and Isaac SDK availability? Uh, so DeepStream 3.0 SDK for Jetson AGX Savior uh, will be out uh, around end of the year. Isaac uh, early next year uh, for the general release for the Isaac Robotics SDK. Kind of a similar question came up. Um, can you share your availability plans for the Jetson AGX Xavier Compute Module, the OEM uh, module that includes the thermal transfer plate? Uh, plan for that is by the end of the year as well. We're working on that now, so you'll be able to get just the module separate from the dev kit uh, for deploying into uh, directly into systems. Uh, there was a question about what kind of batteries can you use to power Xavier uh, and or the dev kit? And so it has an input voltage range of between 9 and 20 volts DC. And you can use any battery that falls within that range or, you know, a voltage regulator. So you can use batteries even outside that range. But if you don't want to use a voltage regulator, generally we recommend a 3 to 4 cell LiPo battery. Uh, if you use a five cell lipo or more, then you know you would want that voltage regulator. Uh, question: How do I get the developer discount for the dev kit? All you need to qualify for that is an account at developer.nvidia.com, which is the same account that you would need to download Jetpack or any of the other docs. So most of you probably already have that. Uh, question. Can I connect uh, my NVIDIA GPU to the dev kit? And the answer is that we will be supporting that in the future. Right now, there are not software drivers for it. It requires a PCI Express software driver. And what is currently in Jetpack is actually a user space integrated GPU driver uh, because the integrated GPU that's on Jetson today does not use PCI Express uh, to communicate back to the CPU, uh, but we will be adding support for that in the future so you can attach uh, NVIDIA GPU to your dev kit. Uh, similar question uh, along the lines of PCI Express there are how many external PCIe lanes are supported on the Xavier module? Uh, in fact, all 16 PCIe Gen 4 lanes on the module are external and able to be used simultaneously. There are five controllers that come in the configurations of uh, by eight, by four, by two, and there are two by one controllers that you can use. Now on the dev kit, there are eight lanes exposed uh, through the PCIe desktop slot on the, des on the dev kit. It's a X16 physical slot, eight of those lanes are wired to PCI Express, 
Eight of the lo those lanes are wired to SLVS EC, and the dev kit uses the other lanes for the M.2 module mezzanines and for that hybrid eSATA USB 3 port. Uh, another kind of similar question about PCIe, how do I connect two Xaviers together over PCIe using the new endpoint mode? Uh, so we'll be adding official support for that uh, in a future Jetpack release, including uh, all the DMA stuff uh, for doing RDMA between the Xaviers. But today, there is a forum post where we point to the device tree modifications that you need to enable endpoint mode on the PCIe controllers. So you can start experimenting with that today. And there is, uh, you know, early access drivers available for that. Uh, so you can uh, plug them into other existing systems um, if you have the cable to do so. Uh, what optimizations are you planning to improve the performance in the future that you mentioned? Uh, the primary things we're working on are en enabling N8 for DLA in the early access releases. It's FP16. Uh, we're doing several optimizations for the integrated GPU still. Uh, upgrading versions of Tensor RT right now, it's an RC release. Uh, so hopefully we'll pick up the GA release of that soon. And, you know, general system tweaks and updates, very similar to TX1 and TX2. You know, we continue to roll out Jetpack updates for those and uh, vastly improve the performance of those platforms as well. Um, I know that uh, Xavier's optimized for inferencing, but can I run training on it? And the answer to that is yes, technically you can. It will be a lot slower than if you ran training on, uh, you know, the larger NVIDIA discrete GPUs like the V100 or P100 or the DGX system. But, uh, you know, with Xavier in particular, now that it has 16 gigabytes of memory, you could run training on it if you are running TensorFlow or PyTorch. Uh, and some of the reinforcement learning stuff, I do the training directly on board. Uh, if you're training very large networks like ImageNet, Dataset, um, you know, it'll be significantly slower. So you might want to look at using the cloud or a desktop PC for that. Uh, does TensorFlow support TensorRT? Yes, it does. Uh, it now has an integrated mechanism called TFTRT where you can seamlessly change your network graph from executing with TensorFlow over to TensorRT without having to export your code or whatnot. Another TensorFlow question, uh, does TensorFlow support NVDLA? It does not support uh, DLA, the Deep Learning Accelerator, in the latest uh, TensorFlow release, but we are working with Google to implement that uh, in a future release of TensorFlow. Um, are Jets and AGX Xavier and Jetpack compatible with ROS? Yes, you can install ROS on Xavier and Jetpack, and uh, we've supported that since TX1 and TX2 in coordination with OSRF. And we're starting to take a look at other variants of ROS to support as well, including ROS2 and ROS Industrial. So we're going to go do some research on those. Let's see. Uh, some other questions we have. Does PyTorch support TensorRT? I believe PyTorch is adding a similar mechanism, kind of like TFTRT, uh, but I don't think that is in the 1.0 release yet. I'll have to check. But uh, they do support Onyx, so you could export your model and import it into TensorRT uh, that way. Uh, here's a question What stands for? Uh, GOPS per frame on, on that slide about all the different networks. That stands for Giga Ops per frame, similar to Giga Flops. Um, so if you're wondering what GOPS per frame mean, uh, it means uh, Giga Ops per frame. Let's see what other questions we have coming in here. Is it possible to create a grid of Xavier connected devices? Um, since there are more than one PCIe endpoint modes available, 
Uh, there are up to three PCIe controllers and input modes. Technically, you could create a grid mesh of Xavier's uh, together. Uh, that would allow you to connect up to three Xavier's per device or you know, other traditional PCI Express topologies from other systems as well. What's the weight of the actual Xavier device? Uh, it is 280 grams, plus or minus 10 grams. That's the module weight uh, that will be coming out soon. The dev kit weight has been posted uh, on the form as well. You can find both of those weights there. I, offhand, I think it's something around 600 grams. Okay, let's see if we can find some more questions here. Can DeepStream SDK work with other GPU models than just Xavier or Jetson? Yes, DeepStream is cross-compatible with NVIDIA Tesla GPUs as well. So you can deploy that what we call edge to cloud. I mean, you can run the DeepStream SDK uh, on basically all of NVIDIA's GPUs, although it's best optimized for uh, Tesla and Jetson. Okay, let's look for another question here. Does NVIDIA provide any tutorials to get started with NVIDIA AGX for hobbyists? Um, yes, we have an assortment of tutorials available through the developer site and on the wiki as well, uh, like the two days to a demo. And if you go to github.com slash NVIDIA dash Jetson, uh, then we have a bunch of repos on there from uh, the team and a bunch of summer interns that we have that have made open source code projects that are compatible with Jetson that you can use as tutorials to get started. Does the dev kit include connectors for MIPI CSI cameras? Uh, yes, it includes a very similar header to the camera connector that was on the TX1 and TX2 dev kit. It's actually on the bottom underside of the uh, Xavier dev kit. And in fact, you can take the TX1, TX2 camera module that came with that dev kit, the 1080p OV5693 sensor, and put it on the Xavier and it'll work out of the box. So if you have one of those modules from the old dev kit, you can uh, put it on the new one. And because it's a very similar connector, it does provide more lanes than the previous one did. Will Jetpack 4.1 support the Python API for TensorRT? Uh, not yet, but we are planning that for a future release. In the past, there were some dependencies in Python that weren't available on the ARM platform. Uh, but since they've uh, been resolved, so in the future, we're going to try to make that Python available for Jetson as well. Uh, here is a follow-up question. Did I say that PCIe GPU support would be added to Xavier? And the answer was yes. We plan to add the software support for that uh, in the future, so you can attach NVIDIA discrete GPU cards. How many cameras can you connect simultaneously, referring to the CSI and SLVS cameras. So you can connect up to six cameras simultaneously, or rather six streams. Each of those streams using an aggregator, uh, you can have many more cameras actually connected to uh, that become interleaved on what's called a virtual channel. And across the device, you can have up to 36 virtual channels connected at one time. So if you're using aggregation, 
you can connect up to 36 cameras simultaneously. And, um, you know, with the C5 MIPI standard offering up to 109 gigabits per second, generally you can multiplex those um, six channels pretty well. Uh, it would take a super large camera uh, in order just to saturate that with a single stream. Okay, looks like we have time for one more question here. Uh, would the Xavier DevKit power a discrete GPU, or would you need a larger power supply to power both the Xavier and the GPU? So that's a good question, and you know we're going to have to do internal testing on that. But certainly the larger GPU cards that have the 6 and 8 pin Molex power connectors on them, those would need an external power supply to do that because they go over the limits of the PCI Express desktop slot. And, you know, cards that go over the limits of the power supply that comes with the dev kit, which I believe is 65 watts, um, you know, those would need an upgraded power supply to support those as well. So fortunately, that's all the time we have for questions since we're at the top of the hour. But please feel free to post your questions that we didn't get to to the forums. We have stickies there uh, on each of the boards. And I will be posting the slides there shortly as well uh, so you can download them. So thanks again for joining us, everyone. Thanks for attending today's webinar, guys. And thank you, Dustin, for presenting. Uh, there were a lot of great questions that were submitted towards the end that we weren't able to get to. So as Dusty said, please be sure to post those on the forum and keep the conversation going. Um, we've recorded this presentation, and we'll have it, along with the slides, available shortly on demand. Uh, you will also receive an email with a link to that information. And don't forget to become an NVIDIA registered developer to be able to take advantage of the developer discounts on the Jetson AGX Xavier Developer Kit, as well as have access to the latest news on products, software, events, and more. So thanks again for joining us, and have a great day.